ever see any seahorses when you were in Dubai? Seahorses? Yeah. No. Oh, man. Why? Are you a big seahorse guy? Yeah, huge. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, just, uh, I just thought maybe out there in those exotic waters, there could be some seahorses. I'll go looking for you. I'll take some selfies. Yeah. With the seahorses for you. I went scuba diving once and met a seahorse, you know, oh, in right. Mexico. There's like, they release like thousands of babies when they have babies. Do they? Oh, yeah. And the men do as well. Wow. We're sorry, William. Go ahead. Out of their cool. man vaginas. <laughs> Apologies. <that's cool. laughs> so, easy pivot into Umbrella Academy. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about sandals. Go ahead. Let's talk about mm-hmm. them. So, how was this series pitched to you to begin with? Like, were you, did you know the comic book? Were you a fan of Gerard Way? Like, how was your characters pitching you and how did you want to get involved? I needed a job. That's kind of how I went. He was living under a bridge, yeah. eating, ah. eating Rice Krispies and with uh, no milk. Costco it tuna cans. So yeah, it was a sad day. Uh, well, I was unaware of the comic book, but I got introduced to the the whole idea of the show and how the show was going to sort of develop and undulate from what the graphic novel was. You know, Steve Blackman and I had lots of long conversations where we batted our eyelashes at one another across Skype and just just said, the moment we meet in the flesh, whoa, I'm going to give you (laughs) such a cuddle. (laughs) And, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, Steve took me on the the journey, you know, that that sort of Klaus went on. And it sounded so wonderfully unique and bonkers that I went, yeah, I'm up for that, yeah. Mm. And then I said, have you met my mate Dave? He needs a job at the moment. Yeah, I was under the bridge <laughs> at that time. Um, he was passing by and dropping off the tuna can. <laughs> Singing yeah. red hot chili peppers to yourself. I was yeah. just tr- dropping them off the bridge. My you beard know, was, was like, as ah. big as yours, actually. Yeah, it's because I live under a bridge. Like, it was a weird coincidence. Yeah, yeah. my mom says that all the time. Oh my Keeps God. your chin warm. <laughs> does. It does, especially now. But yeah, how was it returning to you know the world of superheroes yeah. as well? Because... Can I just say that Save Me Barry is still the funniest thing I've ever heard on television? <laughs> like, that's my favorite line of all time. Wow. Well, that's a great honor, sir. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. I just had to throw that out there. Yeah. Wait, I, mean, so I, I wish I wrote it, but, you know, I <laughs> delivered to it. say it. Yeah. It's all the delivery. Well, yes, it's great. It's very interesting. And it's been 10 years, you know? Yeah. It has a certain poignancy when you think of it that way, because um, I was 21 when we shot the first series of Misfits, and I'm 30 when we shot the first series of this. And it's... Um, you know, I, I, I kind of said before that Klaus is definitely, even though he's probably in ways as mature, as arrested in his emotional development almost as uh, as Nathan was, he's kind of in a state of perpetual change, Klaus. You know, he has, there's more of a fragility to him. You know, Nathan was, I think, loved and very endearing because he um, he's just so completely cocksure of himself that he was never ever going to change you know he was just a child who was just going to get older and hairier and Klaus is this kind of fragile sort of sort of china cup of a person who is kind of uh, is still very redeemable and you know very different so what you know one is 10 years older than the other in many ways you know mm. So you're playing this, you know, dysfunctional family. Mm-hmm. How was, you know, building the camaraderie? How did you guys get, did you do anything to, to get to know each other as a cast? And what was the, the, you know, the feeling like so on set? Loads of guys? dinners and stuff, didn't we? Yeah. And like, well, I mean, we had rehearsals, but mm-hmm. it, it really it really worked to the dynamic of the being of the season when we really didn't really know each other. And, and mm-hmm. I think that, it, that, that distance as families translated as us really just getting to know each other mm-hmm. three weeks, maybe a month prior to actually shooting. Mm-hmm. And then as, obviously, the season goes along, you know, the bonding as outside of the set kind of became stronger. You kind of felt that going into, you know, the later episodes. Yeah. We were all away from home, so whoever, whoever else had the day off, you'd text them and go, do you want to go do something? And, you know, and you'd just sort of head off an afternoon and do yeah. some stuff. What were we going to say? And I'd be like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Leave him on read. That asshole. Yeah, no, just delete that one. I didn't see that one. Take me to a seahorse museum. I screw this guy. <laughs> Not gonna go see the horse. Well, thank you guys so much. Pleasure. Oh, we're done. Oh, we're done already. Yeah, I just got the wrap up. We talk about the seahorses.